Hello everyone! Today is a big day and that's because I'm finally sharing the reversible rash guard tutorial in pattern with you. Introducing the lane top. For materials you will need swimwear fabric, swimwear elastic, a seam ripper, a cutting tool, and for this tutorial I do recommend having pins or clips on hand. Last but not least, an absolute necessity for this tutorial is the PDF pattern for the lane top. So even though I'm excited about every pattern release, this one really holds a special place in my heart because of all the hard work that went into it for everything from the pattern to the construction. As usual, the pattern for the lane top is available now at edgewaterav.com. The first step in this tutorial is cutting your pieces. You'll cut two of the front piece, two of the back piece, and two in each sleeve piece. Notice that the sleeves are not symmetrical, so for these pieces, you won't be able to cut on the fold. If you'd like to save paper, you can cut out just one sleeve and flip it over to make sure you're getting both left and right sleeves while cutting. Once you have all your pieces, we're going to prepare the two front pieces by sewing the darts. Fold the darts with right sides together, then sew along the raw edges. Quarter inch seam allowance is included in the pattern, so make sure to take that into account while sewing the darts. After the darts have been sewn, we're going to take an unusual next step. Get out every piece and match them with right sides together. For the front and back pieces, you're only going to sew along the bottom line. For the sleeve pieces, you're going to do the same thing and only sew at the wrist. For both of these, you want to attach elastic onto the same seams. Once that's done, take your front piece and both sleeves. For now, you can put your back piece off to the side. Our goal in these next steps is to attach the sleeves onto the front piece. Notice that with the pattern for the sleeves, there's a distinct side that's intended to match with the front, and there's a distinct side that's intended to match with the back. This is marked on the pattern, so just make sure to refer to that. So match up the front side of your sleeves with the sleeve area on your front piece. Make sure that right sides are together. You're going to do this with both the outer and the lining fabric, so pay close attention to make sure you're matching with right sides together. Pin as needed, then sew to secure each sleeve to the front piece. For this step, it's up to you whether or not you want to attach elastic. So the sleeves have been attached to the front side, but as you can see, the back side is still unsewn. That's where we're going to bring the back piece back into the picture. Now we're going to do the exact same thing. Match up the back side of the sleeves with the sleeve opening on the back piece. This is where it can start to look confusing since there's a bunch of fabric. It helps if you lay the front piece open with right sides up, then lay your back piece open with right sides down right on top. This way you can see a little better how things are supposed to line up and where the right sides are. So again, pin and sew each of the sleeves onto the back piece. Now everything is attached and we have all our pieces in play. Flip the pieces so the front and back are laying against each other, this time with wrong sides together. Once you do this flip, you'll notice that things start to line up quite well. The next step is sewing the collar. While everything is laying like this with the back side facing the camera and the front side sandwiched inside, you'll be able to match the collar of both the outer and lining back pieces. To sew this collar, we're going to use the burrito method. Get your pins out and pin at the seams of the collar, making sure to only pin two layers of fabric. As you sew, you'll be able to pull the entire collar through, which will finish the collar for the front and the back pieces. In this step, I recommend using elastic. The collar is finished and at this step, we only have two seams left. I'm going to demonstrate this on one side, but you'll do this with both sides. As you can see, the four layers of the sleeve 
and part of the bodice seem to perfectly align. And this is no mistake. Get your pins out and pin across these four layers of fabric, which run from the wrist all the way to the waistline of your bodice. You're going to sew this entire seam in one step. Because this can be difficult, I found it easiest to utilize a basting stitch. I'll first go over the inner two layers on my machine, and then I'll sew all four with my overlock stitch. This helps just keep everything in place so you can ensure seams are lining up and no fabric is getting left behind as you're sewing. Remember to do this with both sides. If you want some extra credit, there's a trick you can do to help the seams lay flat. Take the ends of the sleeve as well as the ends of the bodice and flip the seam inward towards whichever fabric is going to be your dominant print. Then use a straight stitch to stitch the seam down. This might seem like it would cause something weird to happen, but it actually helps the seams lay flat, which is an important thing in a top like this that has so much fabric involved. At the end of the video, I'll show you the difference between a seam using this trick versus one without. So like I mentioned, those two seams were the final ones, so now we need to take the top to the right side. Before I do that, I like to go back and either break the basting stitches or I'll remove them to ensure that the garment is able to stretch. Then get out your seam ripper and rip a hole along an existing seam. Through this hole, take everything to the right side. As a final step, finish off the hole with a top stitch or an invisible stitch. And that completes the lame top. So here's how that extra credit trick worked out. First, this is the seam that I used that trick. The wrist is nice and flat, no issues here. Now here is the seam I didn't use it on. Already you can see that there's lining peeking out, so clearly this tip can be really helpful if you want to keep everything looking smooth. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Like I mentioned, I'm super proud of this one and I really hope you choose to support this channel by purchasing the PDF pattern for the lane top. Thank you again and I'll see you next time.